Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm going to be walking you through how to use the Unity FB Exporter. And the real reason why I'm doing this video is because I actually needed a tool like that for my own game. I needed a way to make changes and actually add 3D models and then have some of those changes reflected in Unity without having to do too much work and you want to be as efficient as you can so if you create a 3d model you import it into unity you want to make sure that you don't lose a lot of the components that you already assigned you might already assign scripts to some of those 3d models and you don't want to lose those connections so with the fb exporter you can actually do do it efficiently and actually not lose those changes so let me actually go into the video and a demonstration and i'm going to show you how to how to actually use it all right guys, so I have Unity open and this is basically a demo scene where I've been placing all the different 3D models that I've been creating with Maya. And what I wanna actually show you is how to create a, basically a, a prefabs for the cylinder that we see right here. The, I already created it, but I, I'll, have a, I'll give it a different name and I can walk you through how we go about, you know, actually creating the prefab. And let me show you what's involving that pretty fast. So you'll see that you have a game object as the construction cylinder. And I also have, you know, a mesh render, a collider, a rigid body, and then the two different materials that are associated with it. And if you look at the type, it says Autodesk Interactive. And, and basically what that is, is a standard shader. It's the, the, Steam, the Steamray PBS shader that is available through Maya. So I'll show you how that works. But I can actually go in here and make changes. And all of these came from, you, you know, from Maya, except, of course, the components that are associated with Unity. So I'm going to create a construction cylinder version 2. And we'll basically make a little modifications on the, on the shape so that you know how, how that actually works. So I'm going to go back to Maya. And in Maya, I have this component. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to save this as a different a different scene. And, and you don't need to do this. This is just for me. It's just to keep track of what I'm doing. And so I'm doing construction cylinder V2. And I'm going to save it. And so what I want to do on this one is I'm just going to make, I don't really like how the bottom of the shape looks like. I might need, maybe I don't, I don't really want you know, maybe I don't want it to look like that, so I'm just gonna just make a few changes, maybe a little smaller, and we can just go go up a little bit. Maybe I want this one to, I don't know, be a little bit skinnier, and we can keep that that way. Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on on these because the purpose of this video is to show you how to export that into Unity. So the, let's see, I think, I think that works. I just wanted something different. So the next thing that I wanna do, that I wanna make sure that you do is on the outliner, so if you click on the outliner to bring it up, you want to have a grouping and that grouping it's gonna be basically your pairing. This is gonna translate to the game object in Unity that is gonna be your parent and this is gonna be your child. So the the semantics, the naming convention that I use is always the name of the model, and then the name of the model plus the word model at the end. So I like that convention. And then the other thing that I do is I bring up the hypershade. And in the hypershade, I've been keeping, you know, I keep, I've been keeping actually the same naming convention where I have, you know, the color at the end and then the name of the model at the beginning. So for instance, this is the orange color that you see on the 3D model. And so that's why I, ha I have the word orange. And then the same thing with the Y. What this allows me to do is if you want, if I want to export the materials in Unity, I don't have conflict namings. So that's actually has worked really well. So I recommend that you do that as well. So the, you wanna make sure that you use, so if you create a new model for this, I already created these ones, but if you needed to create one, use the Steam, Steam Ray PBS that's basically going to translate to the standard material and to do that you basically just click on it and you give it the name and then you assign that to each phase that you want or the game up or the actual object by itself so i'm going to delete it because i already did that piece so the next thing that i that i do is i 
go back into go back into Unity, and in Unity I'm gonna make, I'm gonna actually create a, a new empty game object, and let's actually use the same name, and I'm just gonna call it V2, V2, and I'm actually gonna go back here and then rename these ones to uh, to V2. Let's do that. V2 and I'm gonna go back into my hyper shade. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do the same thing with the with the actual materials. So we want that to be V2 and I'm gonna make this one a V2. Excellent. If I go back into Unity, so I have my game object created and let's actually move it a little bit to the left so we can see. The the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically right click on it and then click on convert to link prefab instance. So what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna create a, a FPX and a prefab for you. So just hit convert, I leave everything in default. And then so we have basically greater our connection. And if we go back into where I place that, I actually place it in model so you can see my my construction cylinder FPX is created. Of course, it doesn't have anything, and my prefab is actually created. So I'm going to go back into Maya, and I'm going to click on the parent, and I'm going to go to File, Send to Unity, and I'm going to just do Selection. And if you go into your Models folder where your FPX resides, you select the FPX Export Selection, and now go back into Unity, and you'll see that the model is in place. And you can see that basically has the same hierarchy. So this is pretty powerful because you can actually make changes and have them reflecting in Unity. So I'm gonna show you. Let's say that I didn't like how I didn't like how the the shape looks like on the top. Let's say that I want to add maybe a little bit of of a, maybe I'll move the vertex in the middle up a little bit. So if we go back into Maya and we go into vertex and let's say that I want to move I want that to be pointing for some reason and then so I select my model and then I go back to setting to unity and basically select it one more time export selection and hit yes go back into unity and there we go there we go so the other thing that I that I found myself with problems at the beginning is I couldn't modify the materials that were assigned to the FPX so the, the reason for that is because Unity doesn't do that by default with the FP Exporter. All this is is basically the material that, that was assigned. So I needed to make changes to that. So if you want to make changes, you have to go into your FPX and actually then go into the inspector and then click on Extract Materials. And I normally have a different folder for that. So FPX Materials, hit Choose. And then now we should be able to go back and go into the materials folder and you'll see that V2 is there. I can also go into my actual model and make changes. Let's say that I didn't want the, the orange color or I wanted to change the roughness. I can do that. So you have access to basically everything on that material. So I can maybe give it a little bit of a dark and more of a yellowish color and if I go and put it in place and there there you have it so that's how you use the FE exporter to make changes in Maya and have them reflect in Unity so if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe and share this video thank you guys